know, I had someone come to me one time and said, I don't believe in heaven or hell. You know, I got an answer for you. If you're one of those who don't believe in heaven or hell, you're going to get there anyway. You're going to go anyway. Listen, I didn't believe in high school. They still made me go. What are you going to do with Jesus called the Christ? You will do something with Jesus every day of your life. I don't care if you're a Christian or you're a non-Christian. You will do something with Jesus every day of your life. You'll accept who he is or you'll reject who he is. You will do one or the other. You will accept what he has done or you will reject what he has done. There is no middle ground when it comes to Jesus. Well, Pastor, you're a little hardcore. I can, be, I can afford to be hardcore. I'm right. Well, amen. Thank you for that one amen. The Bible says there's no other name underneath the heaven for by which a man can be saved. Now, you're either going to believe that or you're not going to believe it. You're either going to accept that or you're not going to accept that. And if you don't accept that, it means that you reject Jesus Christ. There's no middle ground. You can't believe that there is more than one way to get to heaven because Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, and no one goes to the Father but through me. Right. Now, either you believe that or you call Jesus a liar. Come on. And listen, if he's a liar, then he can't be the truth. Come on. Right. See, you either have to say he is or you have to say that he isn't. Am I being, everybody understand me, am I being direct enough? I'm not trying to be hard. That's just my personality, ask my wife. All right. So you either call him liar or you call him truth. If he's a liar, then he can't be the truth. So here's what I'm trying to say. My message is simple this morning. What will you do with Jesus called the Christ? I don't know, you might be sitting here saying, boy, I wish I wouldn't have showed up this morning. That's a pretty hard message. But let me assure you of something. Every person, whether they're here under this tent or not, it doesn't matter if they're still home in bed sleeping. They will still have to answer that question this morning, whether they receive Christ or not whether they believe Jesus or not. Every person will decide what they're going to do with Jesus this morning, consciously or unconsciously. Yeah. Did you hear that? Consciously or unconsciously. Every person will recognize who he is and accept him for who he is, or they will reject him for who he is, and they will deny him by their life, and by Amen. what they do. Amen. Amen. It's not a Sunday morning thing. I'm glad that we get to preach on Sunday morning. But listen, it's every day of our life. Every day of our life, we're going to have to get up and we're going to have to say, what am I going to do with this guy called Jesus? Am I going to receive him? Am I going to live for him? Or am I going to reject him and live my own way? Some of you might say, well, pastor... I don't decide one way or the other. I kind of stay neutral. Well, for you neutral people, I want you to know that is absolutely impossible. I said that's impossible. Not to say that he is, is to say that he isn't. Listen, maybe you'll understand it this way. You either eat bread or you don't eat bread. So you can't deny the existence of bread. Somebody says, do you eat bread? You say, uh, no, I'm kind of neutral. <laughs> it's impossible. You can't be neutral. You either eat bread or you don't eat bread. You can't be neutral with Jesus. Either he is Lord or he isn't Lord. Either he is Christ or he isn't Christ. What will you do with Jesus called the Christ? You and I stand today exactly in the same spot as Pilate did over to you and I and every person who's ever heard about Jesus will decide openly, inwardly, or not at all that question. What am I going to do with Jesus called the Christ? Now, 
We can come up with as many excuses as we want to come up with. We can blame somebody else why we're not accepting the Lord. Well, I've heard this, you know, I've been preaching for over 40 years, all right? And so, and I've heard this way too many times. Well, my parents made me go to church. Well, I ought to end that right there, but it doesn't matter what your parents did. You got to answer that question. What are you going to do with Jesus? You know something? I don't even care whether you claim yourself saved or not. I don't care what church you go to. I like what Doc said. It doesn't matter what church we go to. It doesn't matter what denomination we're affiliated with. You and I personally have to answer that question for ourselves, whether we're Assemblies of God, whether we're Baptist, Methodist, whether we're Reformed, Catholic, or whoever we might be, we've got to answer that question personally ourselves. Today, what am I going to do with Jesus called the Christ? There's enough evidence for you to believe. You know, I said, there's enough evidence for you to believe. Anybody can believe there's enough evidence. But like Pilate, we will make personal decisions too often based on people around us. Based on what we want to do and we know we shouldn't be doing, so we don't make the decision about Christ we should. So I just end the way I started. What will you do with Jesus called the Christ? Maybe you're here this morning, you've already made that decision. I got news for you. It isn't a one-time thing. It's an everyday thing. You got to get up every morning and say, what am I going to do with Jesus? You know, what am I going to believe about Jesus today? Even who am I going to tell about Jesus But you might be here this morning. I don't know everybody who's here. You might be here this morning and you've never made a decision about Christ. Well, anyways, you think you haven't made a decision about Christ. By not receiving Him, you have made a decision. By not accepting Him, you have made a decision about Christ. You've denied Him. You've rejected Him. You say, whoa, that's hard preaching. I don't like that kind of preaching. It doesn't matter. Truth's truth. No matter what we like or what we dislike. And if you haven't accepted Christ as your personal Savior, if you haven't asked Jesus to come into your life, if you haven't said, you know what, Jesus is the Christ, there's enough evidence, there's enough proof, I want Him to be my Savior. If you haven't done that, then this morning is a really, 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 really great time. Really good time to do it. And you know, I could have you bow your heads, and I could have everybody close their eyes, and I could have you raise your hands. But I want you to know something. I'm just going to be honest with you this morning. Your hand going up on a Sunday morning isn't worth a darn unless it goes up on a Monday morning, and then it goes up on a Tuesday morning, and then it goes up on a Wednesday morning. You get the point. Until you decide to live for Jesus, you can raise your hand in church all you want. So I want you to bow your heads. And I want you just to think about that question. Just going to give you a few moments. Think about that question. What am I going to do with Jesus called the Christ? Because you have to make a decision right now. You're going to make a decision right now. Say, if you say, I'm going to put it off till later, You've made a decision to reject Him. If you say, you know what? I've got to do something about Jesus in my life. And if that's you, just pray that silent prayer. Lord, I need my sins forgiven. I do want to live for You. I've been away from You long enough. I recognize You as Son of God, as Lord and Savior. And I want you in my life. Your word says that if I confess you as Lord, and I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead, that I'll be saved. And so I'm confessing you this morning, and I'm believing you this morning. 
And I'm not going to call you a liar. I'm going to call myself saved. All my sins forgiven. As the song went, I've been set free. And I thank you for that, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen.